Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So last week I asked you guys the question, do you use experimental flags to enable or disable features in your web browsers? And to date we've got 479 votes, and out of those 479 votes, as you can see, the majority of you say yes, you do. 59% of you say yes, you do use experimental flags. 35% say no, you don't at all. And then 6% of you, including myself, say we only use flags in preview versions of browsers. Now, about six months ago, in regards to experimental flags, I posted two videos where we had a look, just a simple run through and look at all of the flags uh, in Edge Canary and also Chrome Canary that I had manually enabled in those browsers. So I thought what we could do today, um, if you were interested, just to finish off this poll from last week, because we were talking about experimental flags, is just have a quick run through of the experimental flags that I've manually enabled currently in Edge Canary, which is currently sitting on version 117 and is the latest preview version of the desktop browser. And just in case you're wondering what experimental flags are, just a quick quick description basically is flags are not options, they are experiments. And basically experimental flags help enhance the existing capability and add value to the browser's usability and accessibility. So basically you can add features that are currently still being experimented on, or you can disable features using experimental flags. Now in Microsoft Edge, um, as many of you may know by now, to head to the experimental flags page, we head up to the address bar and we enter edge colon forward slash forward slash flags. And um, in Microsoft Edge Canary, I have currently give or take about 23 flags enabled. And I'm just going to have a quick run through of these, um, nothing major, just a quick brief look at all the flags I have enabled. And I have posted, um, basically on all these flags, I've literally posted a video on each of these flags that have been enabled. So um, if you want more info, you can just do a search accordingly for the individual flag to get the relevant video, or you can just pause this video to get more info regarding the description of the flag. Now the first, as we can see, experimental web platform features. Then we get to enable history accelerator to open the full page. So what this does is it enables the history keyboard shortcut to open the full page instead of the actual history hub. Project Kodiak terminology and Project Kodiak look and feel. That is to do with the edge for business that Microsoft now is rolling out. Those two flags are regarding edge for business. Related matches to found on page, basically adds related matches to found on page results. Uh, Project Robin is also one I'm vaguely aware of what it's all about. I did mention this previously. Uh, to date, I'm not exactly sure what this flag is all about, although it is one of the first flags I did enable uh, in the Edge web browser because it did look interesting. And all it says, if enabled, uh, Project Robin features are enabled. Microsoft Edge split screen. Now this is strange because split screen is actually rolling out as a actual feature uh, in the stable version and it's also a default feature now in the preview version. So this flag actually is outdated. Although it's still enabled, it doesn't need to be enabled because even in the stable version, split screen has already become a feature. Uh, sound content setting. It says enable site wide muting in content settings and tab strip context menu. Microsoft Video Super Resolution. This is an interesting one. Enhance low resolution videos to 720p when device is plugged in. Feature requires a capable GPU. So you need the hardware for that feature video super resolution. And I have posted on that once or twice on the channel. Microsoft Edge Rounded Corners. Basically, this is bringing rounded tabs and rounded corners to the browser frames. But this is already as well, is a little bit obsolete because it's already rolling out as a default feature. Uh, in most regions to the stable version already. Microsoft Edge Basic Title Bar and Toolbar. Cleans up browser toolbar and title bar to create a minimal default state browser experience. Microsoft Edge Profile Icon in the Title Bar. This basically moves the profile icon from the top right of the toolbar to the top left to the title bar. And that's also part of the new Project Phoenix, as most of these flags are. More make rounded tabs feature available. So this obviously, once again, are the rounded tabs, which is also rolling out by default to the stable version. Enable workspaces. 
This is an experimental feature in preview, in the preview versions and also in the stable version. Workspaces preview um, enables workspaces for preview eligible users and it's basically a multitasking feature and I actually have posted a couple of videos on workspaces if you'd like to go check those out. Uh, enable opening supported links with installed web apps. It speaks for itself. Enhanced text contrast. So it renders text using the same contrast and gamma settings that are used elsewhere in Windows. Microsoft Edge mouse gestures enables the mouse gestures features. So you can use mouse gestures. So as an example, um, you can use a gesture to go back or close tab as an example. Just to give you a couple of those examples as I have posted on just um, yesterday. I think I posted on that in a previous video. Windows Fluent scroll bars, it speaks for itself. It brings the uh, Fluent, the Windows 11 lookalike scroll bars to Microsoft Edge. Boost screen refresh rate when scrolling, I think that speaks for itself. Enable Windows 11 acrylic effect in menus, that's that see-through look uh, in the menus that you can see uh, when you have a colorful background. It gives it basically a translucent transparency effect. Command palette, enable DevTools command bar to quickly access DevTools commands evoked with control, control Q and and control and Q, sorry. So that's the command palette, which basically brings a little command bar to quickly access DevTool commands. Global media controls, um, just pops a global media control here to control your media in the browser, very similar to what you get in Chrome. And the new PDF viewer enables the new experimental version of the PDF reader. And as mentioned, that's about 23 or so. I have currently uh, manually enabled in Edge Canary version 117. And uh, um, since I did post about six months ago, I have seen, because obviously flags are not options, there are experiments that Microsoft has removed a couple of the experimental flags I did mention in that previous video. And just on a side note, um, because flags are experimental features and they can cause a bit of data loss, um, um, uh, give or take, and can cause a bit of um, a, a bugs and can cause the browser to break in certain areas. I personally don't enable experimental flags uh, in stable versions of the browser like most of you said you do. I only um, enable experimental flags in preview versions of browsers um, because obviously um, if something does go wrong, it's a preview version. I'm not using it as my main driver or my main web browser. But... Uh, um, I do post videos, as many of you will know, regarding experimental flags uh, in the stable version. But if you are willing to um, accept the risk with those experimental flags, then obviously you can use them. But because of that, I only personally um, enable those in preview versions of the browser. And if you would like me to uh, post a video once again, like I did six months ago, on the experimental flags I have enabled manually in uh, Google Chrome Canary, then just let me know in the comments if you'd like to see an up-to-date version of the experimental flags I am using in Google Chrome. So that's just to finish off last week's poll. As mentioned, do you use experimental flags to enable or disable features in your web browsers? And the majority of you say yes. 59% of you say yes. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.